You have friends over for dinner. You set your drink on the counter and go help your friend set out some desserts. When you get back, you notice the liquid in your cup. It's sloshing around and the ice cubes look like ships on a rough sea. Now you feel it too. On the ceiling, the chandelier is swinging like mad. Then you hear someone scream, Earthquake! The house and everything in it is rocking back and forth. You try to run for cover, but the shaking keeps you stuck in place, fighting to keep your balance. The cabinets look possessed, and glasses and dishes fly out and smash on the floor. The bookshelves topple over, and everything hanging on the walls sways and falls off. You duck under the dining room table, trying not to get hurt on all those broken dishes. Yeah, you've been through earthquakes before, but none like this. Checking your phone? Eh, typical, no signal. You can't believe what's about to happen. The screams get louder, and suddenly, the whole house collapses. The biggest earthquake ever recorded happened in Chile in 1960. Disaster came in the afternoon, just when everyone was out enjoying themselves. To cause serious, life-changing damage, you need to have a magnitude of around 7 or so on the Richter scale. This one was 9.5. This part of Chile is smack dab on the so-called Ring of Fire, the most active volcanic and seismic area in the world along the Pacific Rim. The initial shaking lasted around 10 minutes, and after two days, many aftershocks were still strong enough to set off a volcano in the south of the country. But that's not where it ended. The earthquake unleashed a series of tidal waves all over the Pacific Ocean, with some reaching over 80 feet high. The waves and earthquake were so strong that they even affected Hawaii, Japan, and the Philippines. It caused around a half a billion 1960 dollars worth of damage. Many were left homeless. Much of their infrastructure was smashed too. Buildings as far as the eye could see were toppled, and debris piled everywhere. Scientists estimate that this earthquake was so powerful, it shifted the Earth's axis, making our days 1.26 microseconds shorter. That might not seem like a lot, but think about it. Just one natural disaster was strong enough to make time move. Many of the coastal cities were flattened and floods were widespread. The economy spiraled downward. According to studies, if this earthquake happened today, it caused more than $20 billion in damages. So what would happen if an earthquake twice that size hit without warning? For starters, you'd likely feel the effects even further away. Tidal waves wouldn't just hit the coasts of Japan and the Philippines. They would move even further to China, Korea, Vietnam, and even Australia. And those waves would be significantly higher than 80 feet perhaps double that. That's like eight giraffes piled on top of each other, surfing your way. If you lived by the coast, you'd notice the waves. If you saw the water recede way back, so you could practically see where all the fish call home, you'd know it was time to run. Chances are that a tsunami's heading your way. Say it really happens. You're caught under the wreckage, not knowing what's going on. You manage to free yourself and escape to the fresh air. And you're not alone, because all the houses in the neighborhood have turned into piles of bricks and rubble. The bridges have also collapsed, leaving people stranded on either side. You look around, dust yourself off, and rush to find help. Fire trucks and ambulances drive between the broken-down cars and rubble. You try to make it to your car, but the aftershocks are still hitting, and you're getting tossed to the sidewalk. With all the cell towers down, you can't call anyone on your phone. Your knees are shaking, but you manage to power through. Once you reach your car, you see it crushed under a boulder, like a giant soda can. You continue on foot and eventually reach downtown. It looks as if some giant got angry and knocked all the buildings down. You push forward and try to see if you can find some help. Without warning, your phone vibrates. You check it and see a thousand notifications about a 20-magnitude earthquake. You're still shaking, but that's all you. The ground is still for now. Uh Uh-oh. You hear something in the distance, racing towards you. To your right, you see tidal waves as tall as buildings charging at you. Still in shock, not knowing what to do, you now come to your senses and run. You don't even know which way to go. 
There's a tsunami right behind you, and in front of you are broken down buildings, with rocks and concrete still falling everywhere. Wait, there's a building that's somehow still standing. You need to get on top of that thing. You reach the elevator, but it's jammed. Not surprising. You bolt up the stairs as fast as you can, tripping on broken glass and plaster, but always managing to get back up. You look out a window and see the water. It's so close. You're nearly at the top. A few more flights and… whoosh. The water forces its way into the building and drags you down at least two floors. You can barely see anything. Still, you know you must swim up. But the water keeps forcing you downwards. After about 30 seconds, you manage to swim your way out and continue climbing to the top. You scramble to the top floor and collapse on the roof. You're safe for now. The tidal wave is still going strong, plowing its way through the ravaged city center. Your phone is now waterlogged and useless. You have a perfect 360-degree view of your town covered in water and debris. The ground starts to shake again. Maybe you'll just sit around until this is all over, waiting for the rescue helicopter. But then, a loud explosion that almost breaks your eardrums shakes the ground even more. Off in the distance, smoke is rising, and soon it covers the entire sky. Darkness hides the morning sun. That's when you can see lava shooting up into the air and landing nearby. The lava forms into a river, flowing its way into town block by block. With this much seismic movement and the high intensity of the earthquake, the world's tectonic plates have shifted so that magma is pushing its way to the surface. From the Earth, steam begins to vent. Then the heat hits you. You see the magma cover the ground like a blanket, eating up every car in its way. What's worse is that the magma is melting the foundations of the buildings that managed to withstand the earthquake and the tsunami. The buildings in the distance are now sinking and collapsing into the raging lava pool that's replaced your town. One by one, every building descends. That means, uh uh-oh. The building where you're standing is also swaying. It's about to fail. That's when you see the light. You look up and see a helicopter above in the distance. You wave your arms, run around, jump, anything to get noticed. And it works. The chopper makes a few circles and finally drops you a rope ladder. As you're lifted in the chopper, you take a good look at the world below you as it wriggles around like noodles in a strainer. You land a few miles out and are immediately treated by a doctor in an emergency triage center. You were one of the lucky ones. A year later, the tsunami water has receded, the lava that flowed inland has cooled, but all that magma permanently changed the ground below it, and the whole town is gone. The disaster has thrown the entire country into a financial nightmare that'll last decades. It takes months to survey the town, making sure there's no dangerous electrical wires or busted gas pipes anywhere. They're rebuilding your town farther inland from where the old one was. In other towns, they rebuild directly over the ruins. In others, they just decide to move everyone to a nearby city.